Hey guys, Dr. Rebecca Warren here, and I wanted to take a second and share some information before I go into the office and see consults today. Now, I got asked a really great question in my Healing After Thyroidectomy Facebook group that I thought I need to make a video for this and share it on YouTube uh, because it's really, really important, right, for you to understand this. So this video is specifically for someone that has had a thyroidectomy or has had their thyroid removed, right, for whatever reason and has to be on thyroid medication long term. Well, I will say this, this doesn't just apply to getting your thyroid removed. If you are on long term thyroid medication, this is gonna apply to you too, right? So it's, few, it's a few different points I want to share about what it's like to utilize thyroid medication long term. The first one I think is really important to talk about that isn't talked about enough, and when it happens, it's very frustrating and, and confusing, right? What it looks like is, okay, you get on thyroid medication, you find the right dose, you find the right brand that works amazing for you, right? You feel great, you're good to go, you're doing your blood work every six months to one year, but then a few years down the road, you start feeling hypo symptoms, like you don't have enough thyroid medication, and then you get your blood work done and it's low. Like your TSH is high, your T4, T3 is low, and it pretty much is showing that you're not taking enough thyroid medication and it's confusing because you're like this doesn't make sense this has been working why is it not working anymore i hear this over and over again it's happened to me i've been without a thyroid i had my thyroidectomy 16 17 years ago i gotta count the years it's gone by very quickly um but it's happened to me as well it's happened about every four to five years where whatever thyroid medication i'm using does not work anymore and I want to share this point so that you can have a heads up so that you can be aware of it. Because when it happens, it's like, it's very confusing. You're like, I don't want you to think that there's something off, that there's something wrong. Now I want to explain with this whole scenario, I want to explain something called hormesis, right? Now what hormesis means, there's a horm hormetic curve. And what that means is that when you introduce a stressor to the body, and I want you to understand that a stressor is anything that isn't naturally a part of your body, right? Anything that's new and introduced. When you introduce a stressor, it strengthens your body. So I want you to visualize a curve and you're going up on that curve when you introduce that stressor. It's a good thing, right? But then that it gets to a certain point over time where it's no longer strengthening the body. You've reached this point where now that curve is kind of going down, 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 and it's dipping down and it can go really low where it gets to a point where now that stressor is weakening the body. Hormesis is the fact that the body wants diversity, loves diversity, right? We were never meant to be on one medication, one dose for the rest of our lives. That's not how the body works. The body loves diversity. And a good simple example is like working out your bicep, right? If you work out your bicep on Monday and you're like, whoa, this is cool, like I'm, my, my muscle's gonna get stronger, um, this is a really good thing for my body, I wanna work out my bicep every single day for the next 30 days. That would be crazy. Why? Because you have to switch it up. You have to, you have to allow a pause of working out that bicep in order to heal and then change up your workout so that the bicep can get stronger and then you can go back to doing that same bicep workout. That's a perfect example. We're never meant to be on the same probiotic. We're never meant to be on the same supplement. We're never meant to be on the same thing over and over again. And with that, it's a perfect example of reaching a point where the body needs a change. So what ends up happening with the women that I've coached and men in the past um, is that if they switch a dose, even to um, a type of medication that they thought didn't work for them before, they switch it up, they get on it, they feel great again. And I have to teach them, keep an eye on it, that once your body needs to change, it needs to change. So I want to make sure you know that that's not really abnormal. It happens a lot to people that are on long-term thyroid medication use. Now, the second thing I want to talk about is if you're changing your dose, right? Or if you're changing a brand of thyroid medication. If you're changing the dose, I hear this a lot. Well, I tried X, Y, and Z and it gave me these symptoms and I could not do it, um, so I can only do this one, right? You know, whatever medication that is. 
And when I dig a little bit deeper, a lot of the symptoms they were feeling when they tried a certain thyroid medication sounds like hypo symptoms. Oh, brain fog. I was so tired. I was so fatigued. Um, you know, I had heart palpitations or I have headache. You know, a lot of the symptoms to me with my experience sounds like someone not being on the right dose. Okay. If you switch from one brand to the other, you've got to understand there is not going to be a linear conversion. Meaning if you're on this much of Synthroid, it's going to be the same exact amount for Tyrosin or Tyrosin Soul. It's not going to work like that. If you're going to switch brands, you have to tweak it according to not just your labs, like are you in optimal ranges in your labs, but how do you feel? What do your some symptoms feel like, right? You don't go from like Synthroid to Armor and then you stay on it and maybe only check one time. You know, what I recommend is if you're switching, right, if you're switching from one to the next and I cannot tell you what to do or, or you know, what to try, I'm just giving you information, right? That's my little disclaimer there. But it's worth it that if you're gonna switch from one to the next, that you check it every five, four to six weeks to make sure that you're optimal, especially if you're still having symptoms. You might have to increase it and increase it till you need to be where you need to be, right? And if you're changing the dose, which you gotta remember that, right? You are making up for this dynamic organ that the thyroid increases and decreases thyroid output according to what's going on in your life, what's going on in your inside environment, what's going on in your outside environment, right? So if you're under stress, if you've lost weight, if you've gained weight, if you're more relaxed, if you're retired, whatever, you've got to, you've got to understand that you're going to need more T3 or less T3. If you changed your diet, if you're in ketosis, you're, what you need is going to change. And I want to make sure that your mindset is that it is going to be dynamic. It's not going to be one dose, one brand forever. It's going to be, oh, wait a minute. I feel a little bit more stressed out. Let me go to my doctor. Let me get some lab work done. Um, let me make sure I'm good so that I can, you know, go about the season the right way. I want you to view it that you might have to change quite often depending on what you have going on. So that's really, really important. And the last thing I want to talk about is, you know, another problem I can find is that sometimes people need high amounts of their prescription, right? So this is the scenario I hear. So someone will go into the doctor and says, you know, hey doc, I have these symptoms, right? I'm feeling like my hair loss, I'm feeling tired. And so the doctor's like, okay, let's increase your thyroid medication. And um, they increase it and it's a high amount. And when you get your lab work done, you're on the high end of the thyroid range, like the thyroid hormone range, whether that's T4, T3, or really suppressed TSH, so very low TSH. But you feel great you feel good like oh my gosh like the fog has been lifted you 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 even maybe lost a pound or two like but you feel different on it and you're so happy but your doctor looks at your labs looks at how much thyroid medication you're taking is like okay this is too much and wants to cut it back cuts it back and then your symptoms come back now let's take into consideration something that i've seen a lot of whether it's because of inflammation in the body whether it's because of liver you know your liver is not as healthy as it could be um, the gut, your gut is overwhelmed. There's underlying things going on. You have lack of micro, microbial diversity. There's a lot of different reasons for why higher amounts of thyroid medication may work for you. Um, and it's because what I have seen, again, with the women and the men that I've worked with over time, is that you're not fully absorbing it. You might not fully be binding it. You're not really synthesizing it, like you're not processing it, converting it. There's something going on within your body that's making you not utilize that thyroid medication as efficiently. And a big red flag that that's happening is if you do feel good. Remember, you, you're going to feel like you're on too much um, if you're on too much, right? You're going to have headaches. You're going to have heart palpitations. You're going to feel more anxious. You're going to get hot easier. You know, being hyper on medication those symptoms are quite apparent. But that's something to take into consideration that we are bio-individuals and the truth is there is no long-term research on what it looks like to live without a thyroid, how your body has to make up and adapt, right? All the research is like, are you dead? No, great, it's successful. But that's not what we want, right? I live without a thyroid and if you're you know, watching this, listening to this, you probably live without a thyroid. 
I don't want to just get by. I don't want to just live my day just pushing through until I die. I want the best health possible. I want to know that my brain is sharp as I age, that I feel good, that my metabolism is well, that whatever I want to accomplish in my different seasons of life that I can, and that is being optimal on your thyroid hormones, being optimal on your lab ranges, being optimal in how you feel. And so that means if you feel better on that, that is a serious conversation that you need to have with your prescribing doctor, that I feel great, I feel fantastic on this, let's work together and figure out how we can continue to improve. And I know I said that was the last point, I wanna say this, there are great doctors out there that will work with you, that will listen to you, period. And one doctor can say, nope, that's not gonna work for you, no, we're not gonna try it. You leave out of his practice, go to someone else's practice and she'll say, yeah, this is great, I have experience in this, we can do this, right? I want you to remember that, that it's your health, right? You are in charge of your health, you are the CEO of your health, and you get to decide by their clinical experience, by their age education, by their respect to you, by their shared decision-making process, who you're going to work with, right? Because again, I've heard a lot of misinformation. Well, my doctor says iodine's not necessary, or you know, my doctor says you can't do natural desiccated thyroid hormone. But again, you go to a different endocrinologist, and they're like, yeah, this would be a great option. I want you to remember that that you don't stop you know, looking deeper into, into what it looks like to be optimal because no one, no one is going to do that for you. You're in charge of your health and you need to do that. And that's how, you know, I transformed my health from like losing my menstrual cycle to, you know, being weight loss resistant, brain fog, memory loss issues. I had to fire my doctor at 19 and I was not mean about it. I just didn't go back. And I looked out for an endocrinologist that would work with me, and he did. He got me on what I needed to be on and did the testing that I needed, um, and that's possible. And if you need someone, I don't prescribe, but I do work. Right now, I do have a membership group. Um, it's an inner circle where we do a teaching about understanding your hormones. It changes every single month in a QA. and um, I, I, teach, I teach women how to advocate for themselves, right? I teach women what to understand about their labs. I teach them what's important, what's not important, how to look deeper, how to heal certain things, how to you know, address symptoms, how to look at the thyroid and sex hormone um, connection. Uh, it's literally every single month I show up to my membership group to tell them exactly what it looks like to get well in their own lives, right? Give them the information so that they feel equipped to change their life. Honestly, I share what I wish I had 16, 17 years ago. So if you'd like some more help in this area, you want to check out my Inner Circle membership group, go to drrebeccawarren.com. That's drrebeccawarren.com. And let me know if this is helpful. If you have any other questions or comments, something that you've heard, something that you're curious about, about you know having your thyroid removed or you know having a long-term thyroid disorder, leave a comment. Um, let me know because I would love to address things uh, if it's helpful for you. And make sure to subscribe to my channel because I want to give as much information to you guys on here so you feel better about the path that you're walking on, especially when it comes to your health.